Good morning, God's peace. Welcome to our Easter morning service. Let's begin by singing 120, The Day of Resurrection.
Christ is risen, he is risen indeed. Praise God for this blessed resurrection day. Welcome everyone, a special welcome to all our visitors, online guests. I'd like to wish each of you a happy and blessed Easter. I pray that Jesus has risen indeed in each of our hearts this day. So we thank God again for another marvelous day of his grace. The opportunity he has given us to worship and fellowship around his word. Continue to pray for those who have recently lost loved ones, those who are struggling with health problems, our elderly and grieving families. Lift them up, give them comfort and peace through these trials. I have a thank you note here. Dear church family, God's peace. A sincere and heartfelt thank you for each of your prayers in my behalf during my stay at the hospital as well as after my return home. Thank you for the flowers and the Facebook messages. I miss attending the Easter services but was able to watch online. But it is best to attend, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together. Hebrews 10, 25. In God's peace and love, Stella Wilson. The youth cleaning is scheduled for this Saturday, April 6th at 9 a.m. All the youth are encouraged to come and participate in the biannual deep clean of the church. There will be a pizza lunch to follow. Our schedule for this week is Wednesday, Bible study at 7 p.m. Friday, youth Bible study at 7 p.m. Next Sunday, there's Sunday school at 9.30 a.m. and Holy Communion service at 10.30 a.m. with a meal following. Today, our concluding service will be at 1.30 p.m. with a coffee following. So let's continue now with singing 126, Christ the Lord is Risen Today.
our Lord, he is risen. risen Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters of Christ, God's peace to each and every one of you. I want to wish you all a blessed and a joyous resurrection Easter day. The word Easter we find in the 12th chapter of Acts and comes from a Greek word which means Passover. And we hear Paschal Lamb, and this is exactly what this season is all about, as our Lord and our Redeemer came and died for you and for me, so that our hearts could be marked with his blood. Then we now have a hope of life eternal. So let's praise him for all that he has done for us. As we continue this morning's service, we will turn to the 25th chapter of Isaiah, beginning with verse 6 and reading through verse 9. So reading Isaiah 25, verse 6, in the name of our Lord and our Redeemer, Jesus the Christ. And in this mountain shall the Lord of hosts make unto all people a feast of fat things, a feast of wine on the leaves, of fat things full of marrow, of wine on the leaves well refined. And he will destroy in this mountain the face of the covering cast over all people, and the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death in victory, and the Lord God will wipe away tears from off all faces, and the rebuke of his people shall he take away from off all the earth, for the Lord has spoken it. And it shall be said in that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him, and he will save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. We will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Amen. I want to also, before we go to prayer, almost forgot to bring greetings from your brothers and sisters up there in Wasilla, Alaska, where Cheryl and I were last weekend. And as our Chairman Andy had remi reminded us all to remember those in prayer who have lost loved ones, Otto Olson, Otto and Diane, he lost, just recently lost his mother and also just a few days later he lost one of his brothers. So if you can remember even that family in your prayer. So in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, let us give thanks and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we acknowledge today that you are the creator of all things, that you spoke the heavens and the earth and the sea and all that's in them into existence. We acknowledge this morning that you created us from the dust of the earth. And that you told us that we could partake of everything that was in the garden except for the tree in the midst of the garden, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And your Father, we, mankind, disobeyed your voice and fell into sin. We thank you this morning from the bottom of our hearts that you came down in the cool of the evening and you called our first parents to yourself. And there you gave the promise that the seed of the woman was going to come into this world and that he was going to bruise the head of the serpent. But in so doing, his heel was going to be bruised. And we thank you so much for the words that we have heard even this weekend that the seed of the woman the Lamb of God, our Lord and our Redeemer, Jesus the Christ. How he was bruised. How he suffered. Taking upon himself our debt. Have, burying every one of our sins to the center cross of Calvary. Having been mocked and scourged and spit upon but there, dear Father, on the cross, forsaken by you and by man, so that we could have a hope of life eternal. We thank you for the words that he cried there, it is finished, because you, by your great grace, have given us the knowledge that that's exactly what those words meant 
that the work, the work of reconciliation was now complete and we had been reconciled to you, a righteous and a holy God. Lord, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for the message we're going to hear even this morning. We pray that as our brother Gary stands here and reads this text of the resurrection, that you will order his thoughts and direct his tongue that he may speak those things boldly with confidence of what we have, the hope we have now in Christ Jesus. We thank you for the truths of your word as your word has told us that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God, your gift, is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. That our Lord and our Redeemer was delivered for our offenses and that he was raised again for our justification. We thank you for the glorious and the sweet sound of the gospel message. So this morning, our dear Father, we thank you that Christ arose and that through his resurrection he was declared to be your son, the son of God, God himself, with power through the spirit of holiness. We know and thank you for this truth that in his resurrection you are telling us that you are satisfied with what he has done, that he died without sin and that he is your only begotten and that we now have a hope of an inheritance that is incorruptible and undefiled that will never fade away, that is reserved in heaven for us. Thank you, dear Father, for this truth. So as we commit this time into your care and keeping, dear Father, hear us as we pray that perfect prayer that the only begotten, the very Lamb of God himself that took away all of our sins, the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now let us join our hearts and our voices in singing before the throne of God above, before the throne of God above.
the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Amen. May God, by his grace and mercy, fill all of your hearts with joy and peace today on this blessed Easter morning. We've already heard that wonderful announcement that he is risen, and he really is risen indeed. And may God fill our hearts with faith, even this morning hour, that we truly could believe that Jesus is risen from the dead. We remember in those different accounts in the Gospels how there were those that did not believe. They believed that his body had been stolen or something else. But we believe, do we not? Jesus Christ arose from the dead. One of the most beautiful descriptions of that, um, of what Jesus is, comes from the book of Re Revelations. This is a very precious place for me. You know, when in the first chapter of Revelations, when John writes about meeting Jesus, of course, he gives a quite a description of what he looked like, and he looked all powerful and full of glory, but, and then he was filled with fear, and he fell down at the feet of Jesus. And these words that Jesus spoke tell us so much about him, because this is what he said to John, fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and death. Write the things which thou hast seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. Did you hear that? These are the words of Jesus Christ himself, how he says that I live. I was dead, I died for your sins on the cross of Calvary, but now I live, and I am alive forevermore. And when we are with Jesus, and when Jesus dwells within our hearts, and he does, even you boys and girls today know this, that Jesus is in you, in your heart. And because of that, we also will live forever. Yes, there might be a short time when we die in this world and are laid in the grave for a short time, but then there's going to be another day of resurrection for us. What a glorious day that will be, because when we arise from the grave, we will see Jesus, the one who redeemed us and the one who lives forever. What a precious promise we have in the word of God for us Christians. Some thoughts I had this morning as Ted was driving us here to the church service. We were driving along and seeing the beautiful morning, the sunshine, the green, the flowers, the beauty of God's creation. And we don't worship creation, even though God made it in all its beauty and in all of its detail. Just think of even the lilies that I see here today. Look close at those and see all the detail of it. You know, God could have made everything in black and white. And he could have made, if he needed to make flowers, he could have made one kind. But God didn't. He made all kinds of different ones and different colors and pat patterns and just so much beauty. The creation of God is just so wonderful. And this morning especially, God has given us this bright day to remind us of the beauty of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. How that it is not a day of sadness and grief and tears and crying. 
but it's a bright day because we can see our Lord by faith even this morning. But there's an interesting thing that this brightness shows also. To me it also, and I think it's this way with you too, that even this day puts a, like a bright light on the cross of Calvary. Because now in the resurrection we can really see what Jesus did for us. And we are so thankful for it, even as we sung that first song about the day of resurrection. Did you hear in that song how there was, it spoke of the resurrection and it spoke of the suffering and death of Jesus on the cross and of his precious blood, all connected together in this beautiful morning that we, that we have here today. They are so interwoven and connected that we cannot separate them. We are so thankful of that. So this morning, let's read a little an account from Mark of that part of the day of resurrection. So we're going to read from the Gospel of Mark, the 16th chapter, and we'll read the first eight verses in Jesus' name. And when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, brought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came unto the sepulcher at the rising of the sun. And they said among themselves, who shall roll us away the stone from the door of the sepulcher? And when they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away, for it was very great. And entering into the sepulcher, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a long white garment, and they were affrighted. And he saith unto them, Be not affrighted. Ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. And behold the place where they laid him. But go your way. Tell his disciples and Peter that he goeth before you into Galilee. And there shall ye see him, as he said unto you. And they went out quickly and fled from the sepulchre, for they trembled and were amazed. Neither said they anything to any man, for they were afraid. Amen. So it's very descriptive. And, and again, we should, it would be good for every one of us to read the accounts from Matthew and Luke and John, because all of them describe this a little bit differently. There's more things in one than the other. But this is so significant to me, this beautiful place. The Sabbath is past. Saturday is over. And now it is the new day, Sunday. And that's why even today we are gathering on Sunday, the Lord's Day, the day of his resurrection. And may we be reminded of that each time we come on Sunday morning to hear the word of God. That This is the Lord's day. We are commemorating and remembering again and again the resurrection of Jesus. And who is coming to the sepulcher? Who's coming to the tomb? Is it the disciples? No. It's Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene. The sinner who Jesus had cast out devils. The one with the bad reputation. We can just see a little bit into this, can't we not? How that Mary Magdalene obviously loved Jesus. 
she wanted to be there. They were concerned, along with other women too, that must have been the women's job at that time to anoint the bodies of those that passed away. You know, they didn't do things like we do today. Um, even though um, in Egypt already there was, they was, there was embal embalming, but it doesn't appear that way. It was that way in, in Israel at that time. And so they would anoint the bodies, and they would wash the bodies and put sweet-smelling spices on the body so that it, it would not smell as it decayed. And that's what she was there for, along with other women, sweet spices. And they came early in the morning. They did not want to come on the Sabbath day. Remember now, he had already passed away on Friday, but now was their time to come. And they knew that he was in the sepulchre. They knew that a great stone had been put there. But it's just so amazing that still they came. I don't really understand that. Do Maybe somebody else here does, but why would they come knowing that this big stone was there? But they, they still came, and their intention was to do this, regardless of what. And so they came there at the rising of the sun, at the first time they could come. And this speaks to us a little bit about them coming at right then. You know, God's word teaches us that today is the day of salvation. It's not to be something to be put off. In fact, I really like how Martin Luther wrote you know that there's, in one place at least, he wrote that there's, there's like two days mentioned in the Bible. There is today, and then there's that day. That day being the, the last day. The day of when Jesus comes, a day, comes again in judgment day. But today is the day of salvation. And we are not to put things off for tomorrow or next week, or next year. You know, if, you have, if you're having trouble with somebody, and you've had a disagreement with somebody, and maybe words were spoken, uh, you are to take care of that today. Today you are to seek reconciliation. You are not to put something off and, well, I'll do that some other day. No, that's not, the, that's not according to the Word of God. Today is the day. And so even Mary Magdalene, she came early at the first possible time. And as they're going there, they're talking to themselves that who is going to roll away the stone from the door of the sepulcher? And they came and they looked and they saw that the stone was rolled away and it tells us that it was very great. There was no way that they could have done it themselves. So let's consider a little bit about this a stone being rolled away. If you or if I was buried in that sepulcher and my body needed to come out of that sepulcher, the door, that big stone would have had to been rolled away and somebody would have had to go into that sepulcher and carry my body out or your body, right? But that was not that way for Jesus. Even though this stone had been rolled away, Jesus had already rose from the dead. And remember, if we doubt that, remember how much power he had. We've already spoken a few times at least that, you know, he had the power to lay his life down and to take it up again. But 
Remember all the places in the Bible where Jesus even walked on the water. How he calmed the storms and the waves. He cast devils out of people. He healed them. He even raised some from the dead. He fed thousands and thousands of people. He has that much power. Know that the stone was rolled away so that not only Mary Magdalene and the other woman could look in there, but so that we could see, so that we could even look this morning, that we could look by faith and see inside of there and see that it really is empty. Empty. So the, when those women, they entered in, such boldness they had. I know of many people to, even today who are, they get nervous when they even go to a cemetery. I have a cemetery by our house in New Ipswich that I usually walk through it every day. And it's not a, it's not a fearful place at all. Because there's many of my loved ones are even buried there. Even my, par- even my parents are there. But may it be that the cemeteries even today, that they would not be a fearful place for you to go to. Because I like to think of the days that, the day that's coming when those graves will open What a glorious day that's going to be. But these women, they were that bold that they went inside of that sepulcher. And there they saw a young man sitting on the right side and he was clothed with a long white garment and they were affrighted. We assume that this is an angel, a messenger of God who is there. When I read this, it reminds me of that trip to Israel I was on, and I know there's people here that were on that same trip. And we learned some, we were told things there anyway that... uh, was nice, were nice to hear. And one of the things that we were told was that this is really significant where it says that he went in and on the right side they looked. They said that's not normal. That most of the sepulchers that they've, that they've dug up and archaeologists have studied, you, the, when they open the door of the sepulcher, it's always the body were laid on the left side, not the right side. And so this is really different. And of course, we, we went into one there that they said, well, this, we don't know if this is the right one, but it matches what's written in the Bible. So that was, it was nice to see. But this young man there was sitting on the right side with that long white garment. And he spoke to those women beautiful words be not affrighted don't be afraid there's no reason to fear right now you have you seek Jesus of Nazareth which was crucified he is risen he is not here behold the place where they laid him Just a few words, but what a powerful sermon for those women, but also for us today. You that seek Jesus, which was crucified. You know that he was crucified. We've spoken of that, of him being nailed to the cross, and of how he suffered and bled and died, and how they were so cruel to Jesus. But yet from the cross, those wonderful words that he spoke, that 
even Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And it is finished, and I thirst, and all wonderful words. But you seek him that was crucified. He is risen. He lives. And he is not here. He is not in the grave. Regardless of how our mind and reasoning comes into this, it's just our mind and reasoning are often our enemies. No, Jesus lives. He died, was buried, but he rose again. This is also a reminder to us, as you read the Bible, there's many, many places where the, there's similar words like, be not affrighted or fear not. I believe every time that's in the Bible, right after that is the reason why we don't need to be afraid. Maybe we tell our children or somebody else around us that, oh, you don't have to be afraid of that. But then we don't give the reason. And maybe there is no reason. If there's no reason not to be afraid, well, then we do have reason to be afraid. You know, if somebody would say, well, just jump off of this. Well, if they don't tell you what you're going to hit when you jump, well, then you shouldn't jump. But, or if they tell you, don't be afraid, let's go do this or that, some sinful act or deed in this world. No, if you're told something that there's, if there's no reason to fear and there's no reason, we should stop right there and say, wait, wait a minute now. Why don't I be, why shouldn't I be afraid? But these women were told that don't be affrighted. And then the reason was given. Jesus, I know you seek Jesus. He died, but he's risen again. Praise be the name of the Lord. But then he were, they were, the angel gave this message. But go your way and tell his disciples and Peter that he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him, as he said unto you. A number of times before this, Jesus had told the disciples that after I'm risen again, that you are to meet me in Galilee, back to Nazareth, back to where we, we spent most of our time together, where we did most of the preaching and teaching and most of the miracles took place. But they also, so Mary and this other, at least this one, one other woman, and there was maybe even more there, they were given the message. Just so amazing, isn't it, that it wasn't the disciples that were there, but no, it was some women. And we are so thankful for that. And not only tell the disciples, but Peter. Peter is singled out. And I know we've often considered this, but it just, it's too precious to just pass it by and say, well, you've, we've heard this before. No, we know that bold Peter with his brashness and his boldness, got into trouble. He said things he shouldn't. He did things he shouldn't have done. But he was a disciple of Jesus. Jesus had called him. And I'm so thankful that it's written about Peter because Peter is so much like each one of us. You know, we so often are say the wrong thing or we speak too soon or or we speak too hard, or we don't say enough, or whatever it is. That's, we find ourselves like that all the time. Well, even this message is for you this morning. Go tell the disciples and Peter and you 
that he's going to go before you into Galilee. That you're to continue your journey through this life. And I'm going to meet you again. And not only, you know, we are not going to follow him into, into Galilee. But we will follow him and live out our life here. And then we will be with him in the glories of heaven forever. And they went. The women, still afraid, even though they were told not to be affrighted, uh, they fled from there. They probably ran from there. And they trembled and they were amazed. There's other accounts in the Gospels that even when the disciples were told, they didn't believe. They doubted. And how often it is that way with us also. We are told the wonderful words of life, the, the gospel message. We talked about the love of God and, and of how the great price that was paid for our salvation. And what do we do then? Often we just look at ourselves and say, Oh, woe is me, I'm such a sinner. And that's normal for us to do that. And we're not speaking condemnation to us when we do that. But oh, that we would listen and receive the words of the gospel, the pure word of God that preaches unto us mercy and grace and forgiveness and hope and and the promise of everlasting life and the assurance of the forgiveness of sins. How is your heart this morning? Are you ready to leave this life from our flesh? Hardly are we ever ready. You know, there's a few people that are, I remember even my mother who passed away last fall. She was done with this life. She was ready. She's wondering why she couldn't just pass away. She was weak and tired. And she just said, There's no, why can't I just go? And it was given unto her. I remember her often even says, pray that I could just sleep away. And that was, that was given to her. I know it's not given to everyone. Some have a painful death. But she was able to sleep away. But this this place in the word, doesn't it remind us today of the of the love of God, which is so, so great. And even though they went out and they fled and trembled and they were amazed, we are confident that it was later that they had no fear because it was later that the God, even the disciples were given such power and authority and, and such faith that they could preach everywhere. And even they, were, they preached and some of, most of them were even put to death. They were not afraid anymore, especially after the day of Pentecost. They were no longer afraid. This Easter morning, Easter day even, there were even those that were behind closed doors. Sometimes we think... We understand that they were probably barred or locked. They were afraid. They were afraid of being put to death also. But the day came, especially after Pentecost, where there was no more fear. They were bold, and they preached the gospel. And I know it's not in our text this morning, but there's, there's even the next verse. Verse 9 of this chapter in Mark, where it records, Now when Jesus was risen early the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven devils. So even if there's one this morning who, who confesses with St. Paul that I am the chief of sinners, this is for you. Think about Mary Magdalene. Though Jesus had cast seven devils out of her, 
She was just like us. She yet had memory of what she was. And maybe your life has been clean. Praise God. Praise God if you have not fallen into the deep sins of this world. But yet you know, don't you, with me, that inside I would not want to speak of some of my thoughts. You too, right? Sometimes our thoughts are pretty bad. But for you, even Jesus arose from the dead. And that's why he came first to Mary Magdalene. He came for us sinners to redeem us and to assure us of his love and his grace towards us. You know, Mary Magdalene, we already heard that she was at the cross watching, experiencing what what went on and probably heard all the words that were spoken to Jesus and all of the suffering that he had. She could see that, behold that. And yet, here she is, and Jesus appeared first to her. Now, the, the resurrection is, uh, this is for sinners. This is for those who, like every one of us here this morning, that he arose for you and for me. God be praised and God be thanked that our Jesus lives and he lives forever. And he is so powerful and so glorious that remember that when he comes again, that every knee will bow before him. Everyone, whether they believed or not, even all those that mocked him and scourged him and slapped him, all even those who will bow before him, they will bow in fear. But we will, be, we will bow also. But it will be, we will gladly bow before him and we will say, my Lord and my King, I am so happy you have come and I will want to live with you forever in the glories of heaven. Thank you, Jesus, for rising again from the dead for us. And we wait for your glorious appearing. And we are ready to go to be with you forever in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. Dear Father, we are so thankful that thy only Son, your only begotten Son, was willing to come at your, because of your will to this earth and to go through such agony for us and be buried and even this day rise again. Oh, thank you, Father, for being so loving and kind to us. Give us thankful hearts even this day to, to praise and thank you, even if it's in silence from our hearts Oh, Father, thank you. Now the Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Amen.
In closing, the offertory hymn will be Man of Sorrows. Your free will offering today will be for the benefit of the gospel. Then we'll sing Table Grace 670, be present at our table, Lord. Then after that, we'll sing one more song, be 122, because he lives, and he'll give a chance for any seniors and visitors to go down and eat first. <laughs> 